It's Matt here from Macrocop doing a uh, quick update on what's going on this week, the last few weeks really. Uh, this morning we had a uh, one of our little rainbow trouts end up mysteriously in this garden bed. There's a four foot wall between him and the tank. So the only obvious place he came through was somehow he fit through a 20 mil or 25 mil pipe uh, that's got bends and everything on it. So uh, I'd say the little fella came through the pipe, uh, probably blocked it up a fair bit with the pressure building up. Uh, probably landed in this, uh, you know, basic filter that just gets all the large bits out of the fish tank or the fish food they didn't need and whatever. And I'd say he then flopped all over the place and uh, ended up over here. And as you can see, it's only fresh. Eyes are still in good condition and everything. Unfortunately, not in time to put him back in the tank. But um, yeah, he's. Um, not looking very good now, he's getting a bit stiff and I'm sure he'll be stinky in a short while, so yeah, what I thought they couldn't get through, they did. Uh, I've had um, one jump out of the tank, which wasn't such a surprise, but to find one in the middle of a garden bed today was a little bit strange. So I've had to do a little bit of modding to um, make sure that doesn't happen again, uh, coming out of the, the top uh, outlet, 25mm outlet, so uh, yeah, so um, anyway. Moving on, uh, I found that um, for really basic filtering, 100 mil stainless steel mesh cowls, they generally go on top of a pipe on a building, like a sewer pipe or whatever, um, with a bit of standard, uh, you know, mesh or you know, fabric you'll buy from an aquarium shop for a standard kind of fish filter system, just cut out. Uh, it's doing the job really well of collecting all the big stuff. Uh, each of the beds, say, in this system has one. Uh, that one, that pipe there, another 25mm comes out of the same tank where the fishy came from. And uh, this bed also has one as well. So uh, nice and easy to clean. And, uh, you know, just blast them out with a hose. And as you can see, uh, you know, they've only been cleaned recently and they get pretty mucky. So the fish poo, uh, you know, accumulates pretty quickly. So uh, on the other update, we've had a uh, fighting battle with uh, caterpillars, cabbage caterpillars. As you can see, they uh, like radish. They ride into radish. Kale, not so much. Uh, but then kale, so much. So they're not fussy once there's no cabbage around. Uh, as you can see, they've had a really good go at the beds this week. Um, I don't want to really spray anything in the system so I just pick them off you know it's uh, just a seasonal thing <coughs> over there <coughs> excuse me <coughs> over there we have a standard garden bed and it had some big cabbages in it which uh, they destroyed uh, um, <coughs> they're over here you can see the leaves uh, not much left of them so I just ripped all the cabbage out and uh, turfed it as I really didn't need uh, any more infestation and they were basically coming from the dirty soil garden bed so uh, in this uh, one you can see they really like anything bok choy and choy like they're much like a cabbage so they rip through that uh, again I just you know hand pick them out and uh, it's just one of those things um, netting off probably would have you know been a good idea but uh, at the end of the day you can't really screw with nature too much it'll bite you on the ass no matter what you do you net it out then you don't get bees to pollinate and you know you get all those kind of problems so as you can see the the box over here are pretty much uh they ripped into them and uh, even the little ones they like the little ones a lot when uh, basils and spinach and uh, lettuce and uh, little capsicum trees and stuff they don't really care for it so uh yeah so it was a bit of a fighting battle we've got um a big pyramid being planted out still it's sort of uh Everything's raised by seeds, so they're all organic seeds. I don't really like buying crappy plants from Bunnings and whatever. It's not my idea of good food. So uh, most of the time now, to stop this problem we've had, because uh, you can see in this garden bed, the little tiny jiffies, uh, the seedlings go in and uh, they're open for attack, especially at this time of year. The cabbage butterfly will go away shortly. This is kind of, you know, coming into end of February in Australia. So we found that um, what we've kind of turned to are the mini germination houses just to keep everything out of it uh, so they're safe. So 
instead of planting out too early, like we've done in these beds, with the little seedlings to be ripped apart by the cabbage. Uh, caterpillars, we're going for planting out into these kind of little greenhouses and leaving them in there because we're able to, you know, seal them and close them up when it's cool and all that kind of thing. Um, they're only $8, including the tray you know, that comes with them from Bunnings, so, you know, it's 20 bucks and you can bring up a lot of seedlings, as you can see, our little 18mm um, jiffy pods that they're starting in uh, fit four. And there's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six deep. So, uh, you know, that's a lot of seeds coming up. And uh, yeah, you're just able to monitor and keep the pests out until they're big enough to deal with it. Uh, or in this case, um, I wouldn't even let them out, the, the little germination um, houses, until the, you know, caterfly, uh, the butterfly caterpillars. Uh, uh, from the cabbage go away so yeah so you can see um triangles doing okay except for again same thing choys are getting ripped everything else is okay all the strawberries and things up the top are looking happy um you can see this triangle fills from the top spirals down all the way down into a sump so underneath that cover is a sump for so these three garden beds here and goes into this tank. Notice the uh, windows on the tank. Uh, there's painted, non-painted. Uh, this tank is undercover, as you can see, uh, which is the best idea for, you know, not massive fluctuations in temperature for the fish. And uh, these windows just allow for, not viewing from the outside, but when you look down the inside of the tank, it lets just enough light in that not too much algae will build up. Uh, you're able to see the, the fishies. So our little uh, loss this morning, uh, on our uh, trout tank, uh, we built a cover for it last week because we had one jump out land on the floor, which is a bit disappointing because they're feisty little fellas. So you can see, I don't know if you can see them in here, yeah, you can see them okay, it's a bit glary, but um, you know, the rest of them are doing pretty well, they're all happy swimming around. They have, I'll try not to drop the camera in the gear, but there's a wave maker in that corner over there, so we have uh, really good circulation. So. They can just sit in there, not, you know, swimming too fast and wearing themselves out or losing body fat. But you can see them over there, the swelling motion of the wave maker uh, just keeps them in a constant flow like a normal stream would be for trout. So uh, they just, you know, get a bit of exercise and they can choose to hoon around if they want. But otherwise, they just sit there in that current and uh, look happy enough. The trout have been um, really good so far. They're a feisty little fish, uh, entertaining and look quite pretty all their rainbow colours and spots and things, they're quite different, each one's coloured slightly differently, they're not all kind of the same looking. It's uh, very feisty, very good on the food, uh, if anything they eat too much, you could just keep feeding them. So you can see the bottom of this tank, it's pretty clean, uh, you know the outlets, three outlets in this tank uh, let you know enough water circulation and picks up debris and stuff like that. But yeah the trout are really good fun, they, uh, they're not scared, you know you can open the tank up and have a look at them, they're not freaking out. Not a, uh, you know, not a boring fish. The perch in the tank next to me are pretty boring. They'll hide in school. Um, there's a few bullies amongst the pack. A few of the big ones, you know, make sure the small ones know that they exist. And, uh, but don't seem to do any damage. They don't seem to, they, they kind of peck at each other, but they don't really seem to attack each other properly. Like, there's always something going on in there, so it's kind of like a schoolyard with, uh, you know, what's going on, because they're not really a school fish like the silver perch are. It's um, another few things we did this week. I just added a really quick venturi. So this is the main pipe that leads in from the sump, filling up the uh, fish tank. And I just drilled a little hole in the tubing, put a little bit of uh, vinyl tubing in. And as the water comes up at a fair rate and into the trout tank, it starts dragging air from um, that point. And when, the, when it ends up inside the tank, uh, through that outlet there, it has uh, holes drilled in it along the along the way here, and uh, when it comes in with the aeration uh, that it's getting from the little venturi up above, uh, massive amounts of bubbles come out of this, so it uh, aerates the water heavily. Uh, the trout really need aeration. A lot of fish, perch, like the silver perch, they don't need much. You can get away with pretty much whatever, um, but you need you know really good constant aeration. You don't want any aeration to fail, and pumping it in. Um, you know, just adding extra water coming in and uh, aerating it heavily is uh, just, you know, a two cent job. 
put a little bit of vinyl you know, tubing in there, uh, creates a great amount of oxygen once the pumps are on. Pumps aren't on at the moment, but um, as you can see, they're all sitting pretty low in the water. They're not gasping and coming up to the top, so trout happy. Look, there we go, crazy little fellas. All right, I'm moving along. Uh, solar power. This um, two systems are running here, uh, run on solar power. I've done uh, other videos with the solar power. It's all looking like a bit of a mess at the moment. Um, my older system, solar system, which is you know five, six years old at least, um, it's only running Wave Maker at the moment, and it's still struggling. It's um, as you can see, it's been a bit cloudy the last few days. It's pretty mild. We've had uh, from 45 degrees a few weeks ago. Now we're sitting at 25. So uh, it's not so much the heat that the solar needs, but you know direct sun helps a lot. So. Yeah, the little um, wave maker, it's only 35 watts, and uh, it's in over there, that uh, keeps the movement for the trout, keeps the water circulating around and around and around all day not long. Uh, it turns itself off at night. There's a little diode on the side here that if I put my finger on, it um, turns the wave maker right down to near off, so the trout get a bit of a rest at night, they can have a sleep or whatever. But um, overall the soil's doing well. Uh, the main, I'm sure the cords and mess that it is this week, uh, you know the batteries are up to near capacity. They're charging again uh, in between a uh, pumps off session And uh, yeah overall the solar is still working really well the old system not so uh, It's got a really old battery 90 amp hour battery under there. It's pretty much cactus from being you know depleted too many times and uh, the better new batteries under here 280s 80 amp hours um, Powering everything perfectly, three pumps, aerators, the whole other gear. So yeah, still really happy with the solar, still fiddling a little bit, and uh, you know, tweaking it as always with anything like this. It's uh, something to do is try to you know load it up, see how much you can get out of it. And yeah, we've got the uh, three and a half thousand liter tank for the silver perch. It's pretty hard to see them because they're so good at hiding. So I turned all the aerators off and everything. It uh, would be a lot easier to see them, but yeah, they're pretty much, you can see them hooning around. Where are they? Over in the corner there. They really are, you know, a school fish. They, uh, they just stick together in one big pile, unlike the trout. Uh, they're pretty, pretty much scared of anything. The slightest movement and they all pile into the corner. So, uh, silver trout even uh, having floating food uh, that sits on top of the water and uh, they're pretty timid, they pretty much wait for it to sink. So, yeah, silver perch, uh, you know, hopefully they're good eating one day. There's about 70 in this tank. Uh, they're probably yearling now, and, uh, but pretty boring overall. Not very exciting compared to the trout. Um, we've got our uh, energizer, water energizer still going. It's uh, basically a tube full of marbles, and that kind of, the air um, divider, hooba from one of the air pumps is on it, just as an overflow, so, if anything gets blocked or it's just not letting out enough water up there, either drags air in like a venturi, uh, aerating the water more as it comes through the pipe full of marbles. And if anything clogs up, it also acts as an overflow. So water will start coming out, um, all those little outlets, uh, instead of air going and getting sucked through. So then I know there's a problem, there must be a blockage or something else going on in the pipe. So yeah, the Energizer's uh, doing its job. Uh, I don't really have the scientific gear um, at hand to test the water for you know how much positive positive charge there is compared to say the um, trout tank next door to it but uh, you know I'm happy enough the water looks really healthy when it comes out it comes out all misty and spinning and you know doing what it should so again we've got other videos on that thing it's a you know a twenty dollar contraption that uh, basically positively charges and restructures the water um, so I kind of missed a point in the trout tank <coughs> back to it for a minute what I had to do this morning was put a zip tie through the middle of that pipe. That uh, pipe, even though it's only 25 mil, and these fish are pretty big as you can see, um, somehow a fish got through that. So a little fish in the bed that's dead. So I just did the uh, you know gaffer tape equivalent, put a zip tie, drill the hole, put a zip tie through the middle, because uh, I don't want to constrict that outlet pipe. It's the one that picks up all the uneaten food off the top. When two other pipes take the water from the bottom, and dump it on the two beds. That one's critical that uh, any uh, food that they don't eat gets sucked down it. So, you know, I could have used mesh and different things, but it'll be too constrictive. So, yeah, zip tie through the mill, and hopefully our little fellas down there don't uh, manage to somehow Houdini their way through that pipe. So, 
Yeah, that was a quick uh, fix this morning. And um, the back of this tank, perch are a bit small than the trout, and it's got a 30 mil pipe coming out that skims the top once the pumps are on and the tank's filling up. So we're going to have to pull that one off today and do something about that one because I can imagine that next there'll be silver perch getting sucked up and spat out. So uh, yeah, we'll have to get onto that one today, get it done. All the other beds are being replanted, so we've got our um, one of our greenhouses. Ugh. Now the greenhouses I put um, some 30 mil. Um, it's like an insect screen or a, a bird netting, just in the doorways to stop these the white butterflies, the cabbage butterflies getting in. They were getting in, and they were happily to you know come into all the greenhouses and chew everything up that they could find. It's um, you know in here again. That's a like a seed raising bed. It's pretty much empty at the moment. Everything's been transplanted out, and um, same with the beds here. It's uh, you know it's a job for the weekend is planting it all out and putting more stuff in. There's lots of little seedlings coming up in here still, but as you can see, half the holes are empty. So that's the next job is uh, getting a new lot of herbs going. Uh, we're trying for some rare herbs. Uh, just experimentation at the moment with a lot of plants that we haven't planted before. And uh, I don't even know all their names. There's too many of them and too many strange things that uh, you know the missus wants to have a go at. So uh, yeah, rare herbs and that kind of thing coming in here. Uh, cucumber plants and things like that are doing really well. They've only been in there a little while. Uh, tomatoes are still flowering, which is good. And we've got our other green bed through there. And you can see more mesh up in the walls. Other greenhouse in here. About to lose battery on this camera, so I'll make it snappy. Uh, you know, everything's doing okay. We've got a few lettuce going into flower, which is kind of annoying. Uh, we've got our little uh, time-lapse camera that uh, at the moment sitting on some spinach and some silver beet. Chili's doing well. Everything's only new and little babies, but again, you can see the damage. Uh, we had the white butterflies getting in here, so same deal at the end. Uh, the doors have the screen just, you know, loosely thrown across them, and little holes that I've cut in the, you know, sides of them just to give more air and whatever. Same deal, just zip tie, just zip tie everything to everything. I love my zip ties. Um, filters in here working well. Filter we did another video on before. Uh, it's a beauty, it's doing its job perfectly, collecting everything, nice and easy to pull apart and get into. Uh, yeah, so quick update is everything's going well apart from uh, the bloody cabbage butterflies, the little white butterflies. So it's, um, tomatoes are still going, and uh, you know, end of February, so they're all happy. So yeah, so quick update that, uh, you know, pests and bugs are around, and uh, I've got a few really small bugs that sit in our soil, which I'll do another video on. I'll flub one of the beds and show you. Um, I believe they're springtails and things that are actually good for the, for the system. Uh, something that you don't want to eradicate. You, know, you typically find the kind of bugs that I'll show you in another video in uh, worm, you know, worm houses like worm beds and you know, wherever good decomposting soil is. So but that's another video. So there you go, quick update on what's going on. Changed how we plant the seeds again into little containers. More control over heat, temperature, warmth. Um, we also get a lot of birds coming in. They love uh, things like fennel greek. Uh, they love to pick it up and fly away with it. So they'll pick up a pod and literally take the whole pod out. So there's areas here that are bare where a pod was the other day. And uh, yeah, the birds seem to really like um, you know particular plants as well to come and uh, have a go at. Or they're just interested in having a peck at something. So you know, but uh, overall, um, you know, reasonably busy week in. Uh, toying and playing and uh, that's what it's all about so uh, yeah, we'll do another update soon and a few more vids.